Welcome to Chapter 5, and congratulations on getting through the four previous quizzes. In this chapter, we'll tackle safety and emergency procedures. We'll also look at when and how security officers can make an arrest. As you know, the primary responsibility of a security officer before anything occurs is to protect, to deter, and to prevent. During and after an incident or offense, the officer's responsibility is to observe, report, and notify law enforcement. But what if an armed robbery or a mass shooting takes place on your watch? What if the building catches on fire? A security officer needs to be prepared for the worst case scenarios. Let's go back to the basics. To protect, deter, and prevent. You can't anticipate what will happen at any given moment, but by doing your job correctly, you will prevent incidents and emergencies. Deterrence, visibility, and alertness do prevent crime. Your highly visible presence in a uniform sends a clear message that the property or business is under watch. And most criminals will think twice before breaking in. They also know that private security guards have the local police department on speed dial and they don't want to mess with the police. A lot goes on in a crowded public place like shopping malls, hotels, and venues. The event could be politically charged or a concert crowd could get out of control and private locations can be prime targets for robbers, especially at night. Always be alert while patrolling a site. An efficient security officer will know the patterns and characteristics of a job site enough to anticipate and prevent incidents. When something out of the ordinary occurs at a site, you should A, report it to the police, B, write a report for your employer, and in some cases, C, testify in court as to what you saw, heard, and did. And this means you need to keep detailed notes of your observations. By observations, we mean facts, not conclusions. A fact is what actually happened or is known to be true. A conclusion is a judgment or an opinion based on facts. Your job is to report facts. The police's job is to reach a conclusion based on those facts and their own investigation. Say you're stationed at a distribution center. As you patrol the site, you see two men kneeling at a back entrance. One is holding a crowbar. The two men run away when they see you. Now, do you report that two burglars were breaking in? No. Even if it seems obvious that the two men were up to no good, your job is to report facts. Two men were kneeling at a back entrance. One was holding a crowbar. They ran away when they saw me. If an incident occurs, call the local police and then report your observations by filling out the incident report. And upon investigating, the police may reach the conclusion that the men were burglars. But you've done your job if you've reported the facts as you observe them. When reporting, you will need to provide accurate information about one, who, what are the names of the suspects, victims, witnesses, or anyone else involved, two, what, what happened? What evidence is available? Three, when? On what day and what time did the incident occur? Four, where? What was the location of the incident or where was the evidence found? Five, how? How did the incident happen? And six, why? Are you a witness and do you know why the incident happened? Your report should be detailed and objective. It should include the duties you performed and a description of your tasks and observations. To minimize safety risks for yourself, the client, and the communities you serve, ACS conducts regular safety training so that you can stay current with our company's safety rules and protocols. Now, so far we've talked about preserving the safety of others, but what about your own safety? ACS is deeply concerned about the safety of all security officers in the field. And as you attend to your duties, keep these safety tips in mind. Don't play hero or cop. It's not your job. Step back and let law enforcement and other authorities handle the situation. Be alert, but never act impulsively or rashly. Instead, be cautious and exercise good judgment. 
Make sure you have a clear understanding of potential workplace hazards. If you are patrolling a commercial building, watch out for blind spots on your routes. Criminals do hide in corners, so always check the full area during your rounds. If you are assigned to the same site, don't be predictable. Smart criminals take notice of guards' habits. You can outsmart them by changing your route and checking areas that could be unguarded. Always maintain a safe distance when you are speaking to a suspect. If you're out of arm's reach, you are safe from a sudden attack. Understanding what you can and can't do as a security officer is a matter of safety for yourself and others. Let's say that you notice a suspicious package left on the premises and you think it could be a bomb. You would not move the package. Instead, you would call the relevant experts to handle the issue. So we can't say it enough. Never play cop. Even though you wear a uniform, you don't have the training or the legal authority to do what a police officer can do. And remember, impersonating a police officer is considered a felony. You may wear a uniform, but as a security officer, you do not have the authority that a police officer has to act and arrest. It's important that you know the laws that govern arrests. Let's say you're stationed outside a building and see teenagers racing cars down a public road. Can you arrest them? No. You'd report it to the police. You are hired to protect the building, not to arrest people who are breaking the law. So what legal rights do you have to arrest, detain, or search someone? To make a misdemeanor arrest, you must be a direct witness of the committed or attempted crime. To make a felony arrest, you must have a reasonable cause to believe the suspect committed a felony. If you arrest someone, you must inform them of why you are arresting them and what authority you have to make a citizen's arrest. When you detain a suspect, you are allowed to use reasonable force to protect yourself and others and the property. But keep in mind that you can only search for weapons when you believe the person is armed. If you are within your legal rights to arrest, call law enforcement, and detain the suspect until the police take custody of the suspect. When an earthquake, a shooting, or a fire erupts, panic strikes, crowds get out of control, security officers are among the few people to know the emergency protocols, and people will look to you for safety. So what are your responsibilities during an emergency? As you know, each site has its unique set of requirements and challenges. But unless you've been given special instructions, you should call 911 and follow the emergency protocol while you wait for support. Review the emergency procedures for each site that you're assigned to. You should know the location of first aid kits and fire extinguishers. As a security officer, you are trained to respond to any kind of emergency. But what will you do during an emergency will be determined by the client. ACS will communicate any special instructions beforehand and provide training when necessary. For example, if you are stationed in a warehouse and an intruder alarm goes off, you may call the client and the police and wait for their arrival, or you may investigate why the alarm went off and secure the area. Always be vigilant while securing an area. Your safety is a priority to ACS. Either way, you must act based on the emergency protocol and any special instructions the client and ACS shared with you. Let's take a look at another example. Say that a fire alarm goes off and you notice smoke or other signs of fire. You may be expected to confirm the fire, activate the fire alarm, and call the fire department. You should also call your supervisor and the client to inform them of the situation. If there's an explosion, in a crowded area, in addition to calling 911 and other local first responders, your responsibilities could include directing the crowd to the nearest emergency exits, crowd control, both inside and outside of the structure, and helping to direct emergency personnel when they arrive on the scene. If a client expects a security officer to provide support during an emergency involving hazardous chemicals, the client would provide special training that meets the Occupational Safety and Health Administration requirements. Again, 
do not try to play hero. Keep yourself and others safe within your legal responsibilities and let emergency responders do their job. How do you report emergencies? The moment you are aware that there is an emergency, you should contact dispatch at 877-482-7324. When the emergency has been resolved, submit an incident report in writing and email it to dispatch at accesscontrolsecurity.com. The supervisor will then pick up the hard copy. We've covered a lot of important information in this chapter. Let's do a quick recap before you take the quiz. One, deterrence, visibility, and alertness do prevent crime. Put them into practice. Two, your job is to report facts. The police's job is to reach a conclusion based on those facts and their own investigation. Three, don't try to play hero or cop. Instead, act with caution. Always keep yourself and others safe. The safety of all security officers in the field is a primary concern for ACS. Four, know the laws that govern arrests. You do not have the authority of a police officer to make arrests, but you can make a citizen's arrest within your legal rights. Five, unless you've been given special instructions, your job during an emergency is to call 911 and to follow the site's emergency protocol while you wait for support. You have now completed chapter five. Ready to take the quiz? Click the button below.